Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode here on Swish City. We're doing another episode of our power rankings today, where we're breaking down each team, ranking them 30 to 1, looking at their additions, subtractions, who they kept, players that I think fit in well with this squad, and players that I don't necessarily think fit in well with this team, and overall given my record prediction for each squad. We've been doing this for the last 20-ish days, and we've gone over an abundance of teams. We've finally cracked into the top 10 here, so let's get into it. If you guys have missed the previous videos, go check them out. As you guys have seen from the title, from the thumbnail, we're going to be discussing and breaking down the Philadelphia 76ers today, as I have them coming in here as the seventh lowest team in the NBA with the best record. So let's dive in and let's look at it. Like we discussed, we're going to be looking at their additions, subtractions, and who they kept. And the Sixers did a massive overhaul this offseason, as you guys can tell. You can't even get the re-signings on their name here to get everybody on this screen. And you can't even get the logo picture for their team as well. So it just goes to show you that this team made some changes. So let's look and start this off first. Let's look at the departures. Let's see who left the 76ers here. Nicholas Batum left. He went to the Clippers. Mo Bamba left as he also went to the Clippers. Buddy Heald left as he was sent in a signing trade to the Warriors. D'Anthony Man Melton also left to the Warriors in free agency campaign, departed in free agency, and Paul Reed was waived. Now, the Sixers in this free agency did have a lot of cap space coming off that Tobias Harris contract, so they're able to make additions to this team, and now who did they? They went out and first got Paul George as he agreed to a four-year max extension and kind of filling in that hole for Tobias Harris, but also went out and got some nice role players on the edges. Andre Drummond went and came back to Philly to be that backup big, agreeing to a two-year deal. Eric Gordon also agreed to a two-year deal to be a nice shooter for this squad coming off of his nice season in Phoenix. Reggie Jackson, point guard over in Denver, coming to play some point guard minutes, help out this guard room, help out Tyrese Maxey, and also picking up Caleb Martin and Gershon Yabusele. Caleb Martin, obviously known for his time with the Miami Heat, was offered an extension with the Heat and did not Take it, went into free agency with the 76ers. And Yabu Sele, obviously, as we all know, had a fantastic summer in the Olympics playing with the French national team, ensured himself an NBA contract, and now is with the 76ers squad. The Sixers also did bring back an abundance of players as well, look, locking in their two core players in Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid on extensions, a five-year to Maxey, a three-year to Joel. They brought back veteran point guard Kyle Lowry, who they went out and acquired in the buyout market here and they also brought in kj martin back kj martin and kelly Oubre jr two players that helped out them last season kelly Oubre being a, a key integral piece for their starting lineup as a score obviously playing on a veteran minimum deal and obviously kj martin a player that's a little bit younger that they could use to help them out in the future when looking to get other contracts so if we want to look at this team courtesy of spot track kind of looking at their rankings kind of going over who, how they stand in this team. We obviously know Embiid, Paul George, Tyrese Maxey, the big three here now in Philly are going to be atop that salary cap. Kayla Martin, Kelly Oubre also kind of filling in that starting lineup. And also Kenyon Martin. Now with Kenyon Martin, it's a little weird. It's a little different. He's a player that they gave a bigger contract to, kind of quote unquote, say a balloon contract to ultimately utilize in a trade piece down the line. KJ Martin is a solid young piece that has a lot of value. He's played on some teams like the Clippers. He's played on a teams like the Rockets where he has showcased his skills. But with this 76ers team, he just obviously isn't a young piece that they're looking to really develop as they obviously are in win now mode. So with having KJ Martin play on this team, it's kind of to showcase his skills and give him a contract that is tradable with other teams. So once trade deadline hits, the Sixers can use KJ Martin's contract to help them find another piece to help them in their quest for a championship. While well, that said team gets a nice young player in KJ Martin. They also have a bunch of young players as well from the draft this year. We saw them select Jared McCain and also Adam Bona in this draft class. We were both young, promising pieces. And also, Ricky Council the fourth from last year's Summer League team went undrafted, is coming into this Sixer squad, looking to make some key impacts in that wing department here. He's looked really, really solid and is a, a nice young piece that Sixers fans are very, very high on. So now that we've kind of looked at that and dove in and broken down the Sixers team in a nutshell, let's look at some players that I like and that I'm kind of high on, but also some players that I don't think necessarily fit in with the 76ers squad as well. So the first player that I want to dive in and talk about with this Sixers squad has got to be Gershon Yabusele. Now Yabu, the dancing bear, 
obviously we all know had his run with the Celtics when he was drafted in 2016, but did not obviously fare well in the NBA, was viewed as more of a draft and stash, and ultimately was not the guy for Boston. He went and played overseas, and this season we got to see Yabu shine as he played for the French national team, helping Victor Wimbayama and amongst others lead this team to a silver medal. And Yabu Sele showcased two key quality traits when he played in the Olympics. One, that he was an NBA-ready body, he was an NBA-ready player, and that he was ready to be back in the league. But two, that he also can work alongside these dominant bigs. We saw him play against with Victor Wembayama and for most of their offense using both bigs. And Yabusele was perfect alongside Wembayama, helping out and just being a perfect fit alongside of him. When Wemby needed to block the rim, Yabu could stretch. When Yabu wanted to stretch, Yabu would protect the rim. And ultimately, I think that's what really showcased Yabu's skills for a bunch of other teams. For Yabu Sele coming kind of coming into the league, he's viewed as a power forward, and power forward is a little bit of a weird position to kind of evaluate in this NBA. There's not really many true power forwards left in this league. So with a player like Yabu Sele, if he's going to come over and is going to play in the NBA, he's going to have to be brought into a team where he can work alongside a dominant big. So there only are some teams that necessarily could use him or would want to use him. I know that he was saying that he would want to go back to Boston. I know Boston obviously just won their championship, didn't really have many roster spots open, so it was a little bit difficult for them. But he found his way to Philly, and I think this is a perfect fit. I think, like I said, the case where he can work alongside Wemby, I think he can work perfectly alongside Joel Embiid in those same instances. Also, let's not forget that Embiid does like to have some injuries and does like to sit out. So, obviously, you have that kind of filled in with Andre Drummond now, but with having another young center in Adam Bona, if some injuries do go their course, or if they want to stay afloat, having another big in Yabusele to help aid that front court if Embiid is down is also key. Let's also not forget that the Sixers do not have a true power forward really on this roster. With their starting five, we project that obviously it's going to fit, fit in Kelly Oubre, Paul George, and Kayla Martin alongside Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey, but none of those guys are naturally truly a four. Kayla Martin's going to be playing that power forward, but like I said, the power forward in this league is kind of, you know, not really there. It's an it's enigma. It's not really a, a, a true role anymore as much as I would say. So having Yabusele be that power forward, I think, is key. You just have that guy that can play that role for you automatically and maybe could even insert himself into that starting lineup or work himself into that starting lineup for this team throughout the season. I'm not going to say right away. I do think that he'll be a bench piece kind of coming in early on. But if injuries do suffice or if they do test out this lineup and it does work better with Yabu and Embiid in the starting lineup, I could see him finishing the year in this starting lineup for this squad. Next, I want to talk about Reggie Jackson. Now, Reggie Jackson had a little bit of a weird uh, free agency this season. He was traded from the Nuggets to the Hornets and then was bought out by the Hornets, which basically meant that obviously he wasn't going to play in Charlotte. He wanted to go to a contending championship team. But Denver kind of moving off of him was a more of a salary move, kind of trying to set some salary, save some money for their luxury tax. Moving off of a guy in Reggie Jack was one of the moves that they thought. But I think Reggie Jack can still provide himself to be a fantastic playmaker and backup point guard, specifically with the Sixers team that, once again, does have young guard and Tyrese Maxey here. But like we just stated in their starting lineup, has some more wings. I know Kelly Oubre is going to be, or Paul George will be playing that too, and they can play that two guard, obviously with some positionless basketball being in the mix. But Having some more guards is going to be key. So having guys like Reggie Jackson and Kyle Lowry off this bench is going to be nice. And Kyle Lowry looked solid for this Sixers squad, but not enough to where he could hold his own every single time. So having another additional backup in Reggie Jackson, who I think at this point is a little bit better than Kyle Lowry on the offensive side of the ball and playmaking and setting up this offense, I think he could plug and play with this squad. But also, just in case one of them is having a bad game, you have the option to throw the extra just in case as the backup point guard is huge. Just having that versatility and just having two guys that basically play the same role and can help contribute on any given night. But we know at this point in the career aren't going to give it to your given that they're all every single night, maybe not even 60 of the games. It's huge to have, you know, just two guys that can basically contribute to the same thing to kind of just stunt and mirror match for whatever night is going on. If Reggie Jackson's cooking up, you throw him in. If Kyle Lowry's cooking up, you throw him in. Kind of vice versa, just kind of utilizing and getting the Sixers team to be the best in every moment with having great players that can turn up at any given time.
Now, when discussing the 76ers team, there's not a player that I dislike, nor a player that I doesn't think fit. I realistically think when you look at this roster from top to bottom, if we want to look at it, we can see that there are a lot of young players, a lot of players that are ready to go in a big three with Paul George, Tyrese Maxey, and Joel Embiid. I do like the additions of Colt, Caleb Martin, and Kelly Oubre. They got some nice young players as well in Jared McCain and um, Adam Bono who could look to make some moves with Ricky Council. But like I said, players like Yabusele, Lowry, Reggie Jackson, um, Andre Drummond can cement themselves to be key role players for this team already. So I think that this Sixers team is going to be one of the top teams in the Eastern Conference and is going to be a force to be reckoned with if they can stay healthy. But that is the key, is if they can stay healthy. So my one thing for the Sixers here, it's not Joel Embiid. I'm not hating on him. But as we all can tell, he's injured on the ground. And that is my main concern for this Sixers team, is staying healthy. Because last season, they were top of the East, top two. Then we all know Joel Embiid goes down. Tyrese Maxey has to take the load for this team. And even though he was a star and looked very, very good for this 76ers squad, Tyrese Maxey clearly showed with this team that he could not be that number one star at this young age to take over and carry with no additional help. And the Sixers fell from the second seed to the seventh seed. Now, obviously, they, they fixed those issues by getting some more depth by bringing in Paul George. But Paul George has already hyperextended his knee in his preseason game last night. And we do not know how long that injury is going to be. So therefore, the Sixers, with their big three, are already experiencing injury issues. And the season hasn't even started, which isn't good. Because even though they do have some good depth to fill it in and to still look solid, having one of your stars out to start the year is not what you want to do to get off onto a hot note especially in an eastern conference that is tougher make moves is looking to be stronger to compete with boston if you're philly you want to be a top tier team as well so ultimately i think if philadelphia can stay healthy they have the second best roster in the eastern conference but ultimately as we've already seen with paul george getting injured and i already had an inference going into the season I did not see this team staying healthy throughout the entirety of the season. I knew at some point either Embiid would go down for a little bit or Paul George would go down for a little bit like we saw. And that just ultimately hinders the squad in getting to its full potential and really cementing themselves as a powerhouse in this Eastern Conference. Even though that it, I do say that, I still think they are a top team in the East and that if the injuries do go away, they'll be a legitimate threat. But if they have injuries, if... They have players out for 15 to 20 games in sporadic moments. It's going to hurt their chemistry. They are going to lose games. They're going to get into runs where they play against really good teams when they don't have a said star player, and they're going to be screwed. And that's what's ultimately, I think, going to be the downfall for this 76ers team, as we've already seen it kind of happening so far in the preseason. But now that we got that out of the way, let's look at the record prediction. Like I've stated, the record prediction is going to be wonky. It's going to be weird. It's not going to look right, ladies and gentlemen. But 56 and 26, tying the, the Suns in yesterday's video, but finishing third in the Eastern Conference, I got the Philadelphia 76ers. And for all the cases, like I said, I think they're going to finish third just because they're going to have some injuries that are going to knock them down a little bit. And I still think the team teams in the Eastern Conference are just a tad bit better than them with making some more recent moves. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Where would you guys rank the 76ers? Do you guys think they're a third in the Eastern Conference? Do you think they're too high? Do you think they're too low? Do you think my analyzations were great? My analyzations were great, or do you think they were wrong as well? Once again, you guys have been absolutely fantastic in showing support for the revitalization of this channel, and I really do appreciate it. We've had some fantastic artwork done for us with adding our new banner and new logo. I want to say shout out to Marissa Walker over on Twitter over in that. So if you guys want to stay up to date on everything uh, basketball related, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Make sure to stay tuned to Swish City as we're going to have videos coming up all throughout the season. And follow me on Twitter as that's posted in the description as well. Once again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Peace out, everyone.